Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Whipsaw just means sometimes if a trend isn't solid and doesn't stay in place and you get and you start to get a sideways range, your signals are to get in the trend and you get wiped out. Get back in the trend, wiped out. That's whipsaw. Now the currency markets of late have been trending fairly well, um, which means you know a trend following model looks very, very good. But that's why some people don't use a trend following model. In some markets where you have um, tight ranges or relatively tight ranges, you're better off um, you know, trading a different type of model, selling over bought or, and buying over sold uh, in, that type of, um, in that type of environment. One of the key factors, if you get more and more, if you want to parse this further and further, is trying to define the environment that makes sense whether or not you should trend trade um, or trade, as I said, kind of what's referred to as swing trading, uh, selling the highs, buying the lows with the pre-established ranges. Again, it doesn't you don't have to do both. You can watch both and you can actually have both models at least in play on your desktop, so to speak. And again, the models don't have to be sophisticated, but we're talking about trend trading here, so we'll stick to that. But that is the major disadvantage, whipsaw. And the tighter the time frame in which you trade in, the more chance you're going to get whipsaw, meaning if you're trading in 30-minute time frames intraday and you're using a trend-following model, meaning you're buying something that breaks above some type of average or moving average um, and back because of the volatility intraday and very short price um, gaps, so to speak, you're going to tend to get a lot of whips off. So you have to be very fast in taking your profit and getting out. The further you step back, um, you'll get less whips off. But same token, if you're trading off a very long-term trend, sometimes you can enter the market and then end up giving it all the way, giving a lot of the money back if you use a, a long-term trend line in order to get out of the market. So there are some disadvantages of a trend. But in general, it's less stressful. You don't have to pick tops and bottoms. It's very objective. You do exactly what your model tells you or what your moving averages tell you. And again, you can keep it very simple. You buy here and you sell here. And if you're disciplined and you follow it and you have something that looks like it works and has worked in the past, um, quite often it will work in the future if you stick with it and stay disciplined. So that's the, the major advantages of trend following. And that's why people have used it and used it very successfully over the years. Defining your time frame is really critical in, tre in trend trading. Intraday trading, obviously, I don't think the FX option product works well for that. You just don't have the price, the tightness on the bid-ask spreads and price. Trading something like spot in the spot forex market, we have very, very tight bid-ask spreads, and you can get in out, get in out, high liquidity. You can interday, interday trade and trend trade on that. Again, you're going to have to be very, very fast. Um, Multi-day, um, or somewhat multi-day to multi-week, often referred to as position trading. Um, trend trading works very, very well. Again, choose, you have to choose your time frame and see what makes the most sense for you as an investor. Some people actually multi-month trade or multi-year trade. They go into positions and, and don't assume they're going to get out for several months, maybe even up to a year or more. The reality is you can use the FX options product for that. Most people don't realize that because of the fact that ISE has these listed out to 11 months, uh, the multi-month, and you know, rolling into the multi-year almost time frame even works for this product. So, so again, don't overlook this for longer term time frames. Say define your time frame. Defining your time frame is actually how you're going to define what you, what you use for your models or what you use to get in and out of positions. There's various tools for trend trading. And you can get very, very crazy with this, but I, but I repeat, there's no need to get crazy. Those that have been most successful long-term using trend trading have kept this very, very simple. Three, uh, you know, uh, 
10-day chart moving over a 30-day chart or a 100-day chart, that, and, I, and I'll show you an example of this uh, in just a second against a couple of currencies. You can use moving averages in various moving averages. You can use bands, something like the Bollinger Band or envelopes or commodity trading bands. There's all types of bands um, out there, trading envelopes you can use. There's what's called pivot points you can use, and you can create pivot envelopes and those types of things. You can just use standard trend lines drawn on the chart. You can actually take your chart and just draw your trend line on and say a break of here means I'm in or it means I'm out. You know, keeping again very, very simple. A lot of people use the wave analysis to help determine the trend, um, you know, Elliott wave type of thing. So you need to define your tools, but I would suggest that if, if you start simple, and then you work your way to more sophisticated models and start overlaying a lot of this stuff, I think what you'll find is the simple stuff work better and you go back to the simple stuff. Um, and that's why my examples are, are quite simple here. <laughs> um, be, you know, I've, I've used different trend trading models and written algorithms over the years to try and, tr and, and trade. And the more sophisticated I got trying to show off my expertise and technical analysis and this and that, um, the more useless the model usually became. And you, do, you learn that over time, and you just come back, you almost go full circle and come back to very, very simple things. Um, and, and those are the, what work best. They work best because you also understand a simple model. You, when you understand exactly what the components are of, of, of a simple system that you're using, you tend to have more confidence in it. And if you tend to have more confidence, you're going to tend to have more discipline. And those things all go together to making you successful. Some people can take a simple model that's worked for them and give it to somebody else, and it wouldn't work at all, a simple trend trading or trend following model, because the, the other person just doesn't have confidence and, and therefore doesn't trade it with discipline. So keep that in mind. One of the things I think you can use in the currency market, too, to help you align your trend trading is really try and validate your trend with some real drivers um, and what's going on in the environment. Now, no doubt these are what I refer to as secondary items. Price is always the driver and the primary driver in a trend trading model. But in the currency markets, you can look at some real drivers, some real fundamentals, and as I said, the environment. And I'll show you what I mean there to just bring a little nuance and actually bring a little more confidence um, to your trend trading model. First, looking at some of the things or key premise of what moves the currency markets, um, long-term fundamentals. Over time, the long-term fundamentals really drive currencies. Right now, the long-term fundamental fundamentals that have drive, driven the dollar down since 2002 have been falling yield, implicit weak dollar policy, uh, rising um, fiscal irresponsibility, rising monetary irresponsibility in the U.S., all those things leaking into the fundamentals, the credit crunch, overexposure, uh, too much stim all these fundamental background factors um, have been long-term drivers of the dollar in the bear market uh, that we're in. But you didn't need to know any of that if you used a simple maybe a 200-day crossover and sold the dollar index on a 200-day crossover and never looked back. Um, you wouldn't really care about what the long-term fundamental drivers are. And that goes to part of it. I had a discussion with Bill Dunn once. I, I met with him in his office many years ago. Bill Dunn, a, a very big money manager, and really uh, I, I highly respect him for what he's built and what he does. I was talking to him about some fundamental analysis, and he said, yeah, he, he follows all that stuff, but he just doesn't use it at all. He doesn't even care about it when it comes to trading. He does whatever his computer tells him. And I thought that was very fascinating. Um, you know, he's very into economic analysis, very into hard money, Austrian school economics, um, but says he doesn't even come close to touching that in his model. He says whatever his models tell him to do, he does, and that's the bottom line. That's confidence in the system, and that's applying it with discipline. So the long-term fundamentals are no doubt drivers over time, um, but from a trend trading standpoint, uh, price is the ultimate arbiter here. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.